I'm Dan Johnson talking to Denny Reed, the man behind Wild Sky is the name of the company, Goat is the name of the airplane, and you got to hear some more. We looked at this last year, but you keep making changes and some nifty improvements to the aircraft, Denny. Let's just start up here at the nose. We tried to get away from anything that was conventional. Um, we did our, Clyde Poser and I, we started the company, we did the design together. Uh, we didn't make too many compromises. Um, we wanted simplicity, we wanted strength. So what you end up when you chase, when you chase strength and you chase simple, you end up with ugly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so congratulations, I, we agree. It's, when we first debuted this, I was really proud of it. But one of the very first comments we got is that it looked like a post-war Russian tractor. And I was like, oh, that's great, you know? So- um, Well, the old farmer in you yeah, said, what's like, wrong with you know, that? Yeah, hey, good tractor, it's hard to beat that. So it's a, we felt it was a tool. We wanted something that's easy to maintain in the field, but we also want something that was tough. And that's what led us to all the geometry. There's a lot of work here. Every notch, every cut, every bend, every TIG weld seems like it has a story and a file. Um, but we wanted something that had a really, a really developed load path. And we started that in CAD. You know, we work with SolidWorks with your NX. And, you know, those are all some of the, we use the same software State that I've used for years in the boat software. business. That's what Boeing uses. Yeah. So, right. We wanted to get something that was a true, a true built that looked like off-road. It looked like racing. So those were the resources that we chased down. And I don't think it's to a fault that we, we did. It's not like we avoided information and guide from the aviation industry, but we wanted to build something that was more like off-road, crawler, racing. And nobody said aluminum, even though we considered it because it's strong, it's light, it's predictable. You're going with 4130 chromoly, you're gonna weld it together, you're gonna notch and cope, and you better tool up for it. I mean, we got close to $100,000 just in jigs to weld this up. And uh, it's not easy to do, And uh, but we wanted to just do it right. But at only 13, 14 planes a year, uh, that's all we can do and control the quality. And, you know, we kept low overhead and I think we deliver a lot of plane for the price if people are really willing to do the math. But as you work through the aircraft, in our particular case, you can see we really do have, you know, a full fork assembly, full suspension. It's adjustable in both compression and rebound. With a, you know, suspension is its own religion. Yes, culture. right, it is, right. So if somebody really Ask any wants car to racer it, and they will agree oh, with you. Or yes. off-road, right. side-by-sides, motorcycles. So there's a lot of science that's here that you can make a career out of, let alone do a whole plane. Um, but the, all the pedals, you know, everything's adjustable. Well, as far as the steering system goes, I mean, you know, we put some thought into it. It's easily removable. It's strong. It's chromoly. And then we do a ceramic coating on it, you know, whatnot. And then moving back into the splitter assembly, we designed our own throttle splitter assembly. It's all open. The enclosed splitters, we just had three of them fail, you know, in the last 20 years. And you never know what you've got until it just takes one of those strands and a bird nest inside. You don't know the problem until it's too late. This is wide open. It's easy to inspect. It's easy to maintain. Also, you know, we do, we do a ceramic coating on it as well. So, and it, you tilt the seat forward. There's your pre-flight. Really easy ah, to adjust. Okay. So the seat, to walk in front of the camera. Yeah, seat, seat just seat, seat just, just tips tilt, forward. Tilt yeah, forward. really easy. Okay. Yeah, and no, it brings well. light and access to everything underneath. Uh, really sure. simple. Now this is also part of getting in the rear seat. I'm guessing. Yeah, it's really okay. nice. I mean, you step here and then step here and climb in. Uh, I see. It. The seats. Uh, we did. It's a. Uh, it's a fiberglass frame inside. Then we do some. We do some structure as well as the upholstery. So the whole seat's removable. You get a side load on it. You know, testing seats and its structure to ASTM standards is its own little culture and religion. Um, but yeah, we tested the heck out of the seats. Very comfortable and they're all heated. Oh, are they really? Yeah, so heated seats. <laughs> um, so that's worked out to be kind of a nice thing. Anyway, uh, a lot of geometry moving back. Everything has a story, of course, but and a reason. Um, we do a full aluminum fuel tank, 16.25 gallons. We go up to 22 gallons, but honestly, not too many people order it because we do have the ability to add auxiliary tanks to the side. So the auxiliary tanks are nice because if you do want to just take them off and take uh, them to the gas station. Is that what this bracketry is for? Yeah. Then, I, I was wondering why this is here. I'm sticking my hand behind And originally that so was you like. You see this will handle sure? any kind of bolt pattern. Any or kind of bolt pattern here. But you, what ended up happening is some of our clients, they put their gun case on here. Well, it's <laughs> something to attach bow. things to. So, uh, and then as far as baggage goes, um, we developed these here in the last couple of months, but it's a full rack system that mounts on the aircraft. It stays here. We've tested it. You know, it doesn't, I don't, trikes are a study and drag. I don't, I don't feel like too much of the airflow is clean, you know, but uh, 
I don't feel like there's a performance deficiency. We just don't travel at speeds high enough to really work it into the equation. Right, right. This is not about cruising 100 right. miles an hour. I like the practicality. I like that, that it's durable. This plate goes inside. These are 511 tactical range bags, which a lot of our clients, you know, are gun people. And it's not always about the plane. It's about what you do with it, right? Yeah, well, sure. So we got a high demand for people that said, hey, I want storage. I want baggage. So we put these on and then this plate actually goes inside the bag and then it bolts directly ah, so into these, the rack this, uh, these yeah bolts so this here actually used to bolt right. it to that it goes down inside uh -huh. and then it bolts right here so you don't have to strap the bag down it's just going to stay there because it's bolted and then any your any you know if you if you have ammo cans if you have gear camera gear fishing gear whatever it is it just goes inside the bag i've seen other, some of our guys are putting large Mos, uh, moscow and adventure motorcycling bags on here so what we originally designed it for for extra fuel most people are using for extra gear depending on what they do with the machine so uh, as far as the A-arms are concerned, you know, there, there's reasons that we put the radiuses in it. For, um, there's reasons that we moved the center of the axle line behind the airframes. When we first started, we did exactly conventional. We, we saw what other manufacturers were doing. Uh, that was common. We we're like, you know, when I come in and I land, I'm able to float that front wheel out. You can float it out there for three, 400 yards if you want to. Which most pilots think is a good thing. They think that's thing. a great yeah, thing. keep the stress yeah. off the nose wheel. What we discovered is we did a lot of test flying, like close to 400 hours landing off field, the Hacienda Riverbed and rocks and large rocks, baby head sized rocks and sand. We noticed that when you come in and land, we might want to come in with a lot of airspeed and control, but we want to bleed that off quickly. And I want, as soon as I touch down, I want that front wheel on the ground. I would so that you have steering. Directional stability, for sure. And in your case, you can do braking and other things up there too. Well, right? you know, we started out with brakes on the front and when that front wheel comes down, if you're on loose sand or on the beach, just, skids. just even if we ran two separate master cylinders with maybe 20% of the braking power to the front, it doesn't take much pressure on that brake to lock up that front end and lose that directional mm -hmm. stability. So we actually end up just going away from it and going to a larger brake system in the back because Going to a 29 inch bush wheel means a lot of changes in not only just the tire size. There's the, you, you, you can't just take a trike, put big tires on it and call it a Tundra or off field machine. It, it doesn't work like that. Um, so in racing off road side by sides, there's, a, there's, there's other parts, braking, suspension, things have to be adjustable. Again, suspension is a culture and religion of its own. So some people are doing different valving, uh, but that's, we have our own theories on that and our own practice. But what we did is we moved the axle distance behind the airframe so it would force that front end down quickly. And there must, we'll put some videos out there. We're and working put on some more weight on it. Get out the weight on it, get the stability because you want that directional stability because you don't always land in a straight line. And if you're going to land on a dog leg and if it's mm. off to one side, if you're off camber, yeah, you definitely, a tricycle is always going to want to go downhill. So we definitely wanted that control right quickly. As soon as you touch down, no flare about it, nothing fancy. Let's get down and dirty, land back, back country. So, that's why we did it. It works really good where we've got it. We also have adjustable alignment. Some of the some of the trikes that I've flown that are especially the high speed trikes. When you come in and land, you take off. You know, you start to feel like you're on top of you know balancing on a basketball before takeoff. And no, we don't want any of that. This thing is on rails during takeoff, during landing. You is very positive, and I, that's something we wanted. So between the structure, the suspension, the alignment, the ability to set up your alignment. It just tracks really nice. Um, even if I didn't design it, even if I didn't build it, this is the plane I've dreamt of my whole life. And that's 19 now years and nine. Let me interrupt you there <laughs> to say that you've got quite a life in trikes here too. You've done some three axis flying, you told me about, and uh, you, your real heart is in trikes, but yeah. you've got a lot of time in flying these things, not just the designing and the testing of the design <laughs> and some of that stuff, but you've done a lot of teaching, is that correct? I, you know, I enjoy teaching. Um, you know, it, it's not for everybody. You know, I, I, I kind of grew up in the Cascades and doing a lot of climbing. And it was funny because when you work with different people, they nobody guarantees you the summit. They guarantee the shot. And so when we, I kind of correlate trike flying to a lot of mountaineering and that it's all about the decisions you make. It's all about being able to do it tomorrow. But from a flying standpoint, we've got almost 300 students out there that we've done over the last 19 years. Uh, we have a formula for doing it. It's probably not for everybody, but I, I, I'm not easy on people, but at the same time, 
I like those relationships to last years and years. And it's funny, I get phone calls back, people I talked to fly 15 years ago and they say, Denny, I know why you hammered that into me. I know why you wouldn't, wouldn't let me go at such low hours and now I know why. But you know, one thing I say after 9,200 hours and 300 students is we have a perfect safety record. Is that right? And knock on something, knock on wood here. <laughs> but, and you know, I'm very proud of that. Um, I Nine, know that- 9,200 <laughs> hours of, uh, that's flight instruction time? <laughs> that's flight instruction time, not <laughs> chasing a, coyotes. That's a serious amount of flight it really, instruction. But, so. You know, you. I wanted you to bring that out because you're not just an aircraft designer. You're a, a, a pilot of the aircraft too and all that. You teach people and you bring other people into this activity. So when you do all the things you're doing here, you have a very specific goal in mind with these people. Well, right? I, I mean, I have, I have, I mean, I have time into that bolt. You know, I have time <laughs> into that pedal. I, I mean, there's, you know how it is in aviation. It, it's, it's not for the bottom line. You know, it, it's a, it's a passion. Um, and you know we have a formula that it works. Not every, not, I mean, we get 100 applications a year for trike school. Um, we've got more people that want these planes than we can deliver. Mm. Um, we've realized our reality is going to be 13, maybe 14 planes a year. That's going to be it. Um, if people would please order kits, that would be great. But everybody wants the plane built, and nobody <laughs> seems, nobody seems to care about the cost. But I would like to sell kits. I want to spend time with those people. But like I said, we can only take that many people a year. Sure. When Clyde, when Clyde and I first started out on the design of the aircraft, um, we recognized a few things in trikes, and that is that low center of gravity and a high center lift was something that's inherent to trikes. And how can we, how can we take that characteristic that already exists and make it better? So what we did is we came up with a trike that has an extremely low center of gravity, an extremely high center lift. So if you widened that gap. We did. We, we went longer. Makes it even more stable. Wider. We really did. And um, I don't know that the result was necessarily something that we intended, but we stumbled upon something that I think that other trikes will do at some point. Because once you fly this, you recognize how much of the work that this trike does for you in flight. You know, I, I, I watch the best wing designers, whether they're in the United States and, or overseas, and everything's wing, wing, wing. I really believe that the trike is fundamentally stable because of the low CG. Mm -hmm. So we worked with that. But one thing we wanted to do is if you get that swing, the pendular load, but if, you're, if your gyroscopic moment on your propeller and engine is too low, they can add to uh -huh. the torsional problem. So we raise the thrust line. So there'll be no other trikes that you'll see on the market. I'm six feet tall. Our thrust line is clear up here. So low CG, high center lift, but extremely high thrust line. And then on our engines, all our engines are adjustable. And so you can move your, you can move the, the, well, if you want to call it P factor, you can move it one way or another up, down in all three axes, depending on the propeller that you use mm. or the engine installation. So there's adjustability into this aircraft that we just don't have on other planes or options. So if you were to fly this, the way the wing engine and plane works together, there's really no distinction or differentiation in what you feel in the wing between what you're feeling in the airframe. Very smooth. When, for example, in a trike, when you take off, there's always a little bit of English you put on the bar when you feel the ass end kick out. Can I say that? The back end, when you <laughs> the feel the back, back end kick out, when you take off, you'd not get that with this plane. Okay, so um, I think that if you, if you were to feel it, you, it's hard for me to even explain it, but it just feels like everything's working together. It's very much feels like it's on rails. So There's tell me a, a little bit about this, this now. You know, if you you know, we started out using the electric fan system to cool the thermal mass, and we were using different radiators for that. But the truth is, Rotax just doesn't make a radiator for a uh, for a pusher configuration that really supplies the amount of airflow we need here in the desert. So we had to go to something that was larger thermal mass. But the problem with large thermal mass in we got away from the fan. That's great because I don't know the fan. If the fan quits, you're gonna lose the you lose control of the engine temperature. It runs away. You're gonna lose the engine. So and we freed up four and a half amps, which is a lot for us. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so we can be naturally air cooled here, but the large thermal mass allows us here in Arizona in 114 degrees to idle on the taxiway for 20 minutes while we're waiting for jet wake turbulence. Uh -huh. But if you're flying up north in Washington at zero degrees, this can be too much thermal mass, you can run too cool. So we came up with these slats right here, 
And what we do is yeah, you take grooves right here you're talking yep. about. And you There's each one on the slot, other side you as put well. them in and they lock in on the other side. You put one, two, three, four. Each one of these gives you a, a range of about 15 degrees oh, and on performance. Just, and it just blocks the, uh, yeah. it just blocks the uh, movement of air through the radiator. Yep, it does and it works really good. Um, again, with the turbocharged 914, this has been an absolute joy to learn through. And I'll tell you, it's taken us a year and a half to really understand everything we want to know about the engine. But when this thing really gets in and that turbocharger kicks in, we're looking at 1,600 feet a minute and climb. Yeah, it's really fun. Your smile shows it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your ankles yeah, are so hard. Here's, but it's the, not... here's this big boy aircraft, <laughs> 1,600 feet a minute. Right. And, and for those that know about trike wings, you can see it's a single service trike wing too. This yeah. isn't a complex, fully enclosed wing, which is good for going fast, but that's not your mission. We're not here. trying to go fast. And that wing will produce lighter handling right. loads and is yeah. uh, and, and is a terrific lifting device. It is even very the single surface. Very tunable wing. You know, we we've got 17s that'll do well over 60 miles an hour. We have 17s that we can tune to fly 40. But I think that most people want simplicity. They want simple to set up, simple to take down, easy to fly, short takeoff and landing. Well, and your whole trike carriage, you were talking several times about how you can see this. You know if you've got it, it's easy to inspect. Yeah. The same is true with the wing. What we kind of learned is that we got this labor of love building this incredibly ugly airplane. We kind of <laughs> like it. So um, it's uh, it's all we've really enjoyed it. It's open. You can see it. There's no mystery. It's easy to work on. You know, some things we wanted to make nicer, and more complicated, but it just is really easy to maintain in the field. Sure, makes great sense yeah. to me, Denny. So, look, we've asked you for a lot of information, and you've delivered very <laughs> well on this. It's, there's so much to see that we felt we had to spend the time on it. But you know, people are gonna be stimulated by this to ask more questions. How can we find you on the web so that they can do oh. that or start getting in that long line of people who wanna buy these things? The easiest way to find us certainly on the web, www.wildskyaircraft.com. Okay. Or our school, which is www.trikeschool.com. Or just give me a ring, 509-990-5060. There you go. We're conservative. Conservative school, conservative pilots, but um, like I said, we're gonna be low volume. That's where we're gonna stay. Cool, I think a lot of people will appreciate that. So there you go, all the contact information you need to get a hold of Denny Reed and Wild Sky and learn more about the GOAT and everything that's going on <laughs> with this company. A Thanks, lot there, Dan. as you can see. You can find more about trikes of all kinds, about this particular one, but all the others as well, and lots of other affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com.